So this is where I'm likely to get it wrong. So we have L11 and then LK. Oh, there's no transpose there. Um, transpose and then L31 transpose. All right, and then you'll get 0LKK, L32 transpose, and then 0, 0, tra uh, you know, vector transpose, and then L33. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, that's a typo. Um, is it a typo? No, it's not a typo. I was right the first time. So in that case, this should be like that. Yeah. Cause we're, we're, right, because we're just isolating a single element L sub KK. Right, so the stuff to the left of it is a row vector. I'm sorry, it's hard to screw this up. It's, it's easy to screw this up with all you guys watching. Yeah? Why am I, did I, oh, yeah, I should have. Any other mistakes? Uh, I think we're good. Uh, by the way, I guess L32 is a vector, but it doesn't actually matter. Uh, yes? Yeah, so I mean, so they're all sub-matrices in some sense, right? But really, I'm separating out the, K, the kth row and the kth column, right? So that means everything in row k is a row vector, right? Like LK, K, L, like LK up there is correct. And then I suppose L32 is actually a column vector. I don't use that fact, but that's also true. Yes? No, L31 is just a matrix. Yeah, L11 and L33 are lower triangular. Yeah, sorry, poor notation, my bad, I'll fix it in the notes. Okay, but thankfully for us, we actually only care about two elements of this product, which I've uh, conveniently written for you here. I can try and multiply them, and hopefully I won't botch it quite as much as I just did. So we're just going to ignore the first row of this matrix. In the second row, you get LK transpose times L11 transpose. Yes! LK transpose times L11 transpose. I did it right. And the second one, we're going to get LK dot LK, right? Plus LKK squared. Yeah? Uh, oops. Right? And then the rest of our matrix we don't care about. Cool? All right, so why did I go through all this work? Ugh. Well, so let's remember. So this is, we're trying to factor this matrix C into LL transpose. Right? So in particular, let's read off, for example, what this is telling us. This is telling us that, that the k kth element of C is equal to LK dot LK plus LK uh, squared. Right. Okay, and why is that important? Well, let's let's read off one other relationship, which is let's go ahead and take his transpose, and so we'll get L one one L k is equal to C k. Right, where this is the stuff that corresponds in the same in the same piece as uh, L k. Right. Um, it's confusing or what? It's confusing for me too. Such is life. Um, right, but these two relationships together give us a very slick way of computing the Cholesky factorization. Why is that? Well, where does LK live? He lives to the left of LKK. Right? And similarly, um, what is L11? It's the upper triangle of L. Right? So let's think about doing this inductively and going from the top down. Right? The upper left element of A, uh, of, of L rather, is going to be pretty easy to find, right? Because all he is, uh, if I do this properly, um, uh, right, so you can just read him off as the square of, uh, so if you took, sorry, if you did this and this were the upper left element, right, then the upper left element of LL transpose would just be this number squared. So that gives you a starting point for the upper left element of L. Right? This is L as upper, as upper triangular. You know the rest of the first row. It's 0. Now let's go to the second row. 
right? Well, what does this tell us? Well, these two equations combined, I claim, basically write this in terms of the, the, the rows you've already seen, right? And why is that? Well, let's see here. So the, um, right, so this guy is always known. Okay, now let's take a look at the second relationship here. What is L11? Well, we've already computed L11, right? Because we're moving row by row by row, and we care about row k now. So this thing is known. This guy is known, because it just comes from C. So this is a linear system of equations to give you the vector LK. In fact, it is a lower triangular system of equations to give you the vector LK. Right? So I can solve for LK using forward substitution. So I do that, and now I look at this relationship, and I can just, and, and, and I subtract LK from both sides. Right, because we know this, it comes from C. We know this because we just computed it by forward substitution. And this gives us the diagonal element of L. And now we move forward. Is that cool or what? So this gives you a way of computing the Cholesky factorization of this uh, symmetric positive definite matrix C uh, just by kind of inductively walking down and doing lots of forward substitution. Yep. And I won't even try and write code for this on the board, but it is in your course notes here. Thankfully, that ends the... Uh, the difficult portion of our lecture. We have two minutes, which is more than enough uh, to talk about a couple things. Well, maybe I'll save the last couple of slides for next time. But uh, one sort of philosophical point is that the Cholesky factorization tells you about what this quantity x transpose Cx is. Right? And why is that? Let's do a bit of erasing. Maybe we'll finish with that today. And then uh, next time we'll talk about sparsity. Ugh. Right, so what is this product? Well, we expanded, oh, it turned green. Huh. Um, all right, so we have x transpose Cx, right? But we just proved that we can always factor C in a particular way. Uh, oops, well, you can factor it as C, or you can factor it as L transpose Lx, right? And let's factor this just a little bit more as Lx transpose Lx. The same, of course, as, um, in fact, just for fun, let's put a vector y here, like that. And this is lx dot ly as vectors. Right? There's still a, sort of a philosophical point here, which says, OK, if c is a positive definite matrix, Right, what does that mean? That means that you get a positive number anytime you put the same guy in there twice. And it sort of looks like, you know, when you take the norm, you take the dot product with yourself and you get a positive thing because it's the norm. And you get zero if and only if you have zero. Same thing happens with the positive definite matrix, yeah? So what's going on here? Well, the Cholesky factorization tells you that secretly when you write things in this form, for a positive definite matrix C, there's actually some rotation of space, right? This L matrix here. So that if you pre-multiply your x and your y by L, then you really are taking the dot product. Does that make sense? So when you do the Cholesky factorization, all it's saying is that under some linear transformation, right? Like maybe I have to take x and y and warp them to like x and some weird y. But after I do that, right, all of a sudden space looks Euclidean again. My dot products are just normal dot products and life is good. Right? So anyway, the sort of philosophical point behind Cholesky factorization is that symmetric positive definite matrices have this very nice structure. And we sort of already knew that, right? Because our favorite symmetric positive definite matrix is A transpose A, and that comes from taking dot products and solving these least squares problems. Right? So now we've sort of completed the if and only if. So anyway, uh, we'll stop there for today. Uh, next time, I guess, we'll start by talking about uh, what to do when your matrices are sparse, right? Like when you have n non-zero elements, even though your matrix is size of n, n squared. And uh, from there, we'll move on to QR factorization, eigenproblems, and finally hit some nonlinear stuff. Cool? All right, I'll see you guys on Monday. And this problem set is hard, OK? So, so get started. Look at it, please. It was hard for me. Yeah. That's which probably isn't surprising to you anymore. Um, yeah, can we can we turn off the camera, please? <laughs>